Hi everybody, meteorologist David Paul here. Uh, it's your tropical update for Wednesday, October the 5th. This is in the evening. Uh, it's all about Invest 91L, a tropical wave that has now moved into the Caribbean. It's showing slight signs that it's beginning to try to close off a low. I think this may be upgraded to a depression or a tropical storm as we head through the coming weekend. We'll take a close look at the forecast and all the aspects of the storm. As far as the entire season goes, you remember the forecast, and this was the updated forecast in August, Colorado State uh, forecasting 18 named storms, NOAA forecasting a range between 14 and 20, so about in the same ballpark as Colorado State was. Also forecasting three to five majors, NOAA or four majors by Colorado State. Uh, so where are we now? Remember, Colorado State was forecasting 18 total named storms for the season, and Ian has brought us to a count of nine storms. So we would have to get to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have to get into coal to get to the low end of the range of Noah's forecast. And then Owen, Paula, Richard get to Sherry to get to 18 storms to match uh, Colorado State's estimate for the number of storms. Uh, interesting forecasting about four major hurricanes for the entire season. We've already had two of those. Ian was a Cat 4 and Fiona became a Cat 4 as well. Looking at climatology in October, where do storms typically form in the month of October and where do they typically go? Well, they typically form here, Northwest Caribbean, Far Eastern Gulf of Mexico, over the Bahamas, and then off the East Coast of the United States. And they form there because this time of the year, quite often, we're getting frontal boundaries push off the East and Southeast Coast. A surface front is a broad surface trough of low pressure. And at this time of the year in October, so we're getting the front, so the seasons are changing, winter's trying to come, but sea surface temperatures out in here are still warm enough to support tropical development. And you get a front out here, and that elongated trough can become, you know, little uh, vorts can form, little vortices can form on that surface trough and develop into tropical depressions and tropical storms. The associated upper level trough with that front wants to pull everything to the north very quickly. So that's why you get formation here, and that's why the tracks are quite often yanked right to the north immediately, which is why the track of 91L, which is right here, forecasting to move due west is a little unusual, but this one is not forming because of a front coming off the east coast. It's forming from a tropical wave, which came off the west coast of Africa more than a week ago. TD number 12 is still just that. TD number 12, it's forecast to stay that way. So the next name on the list is Julia, and it's looking likely that this will be at the name Julia if it does develop. And the Hurricane Center here on this Wednesday evening now is up to, to a 90% chance that it does develop. Satellite shows not much to TD12. And then more, but still disorganized uh, as far as our tropical disturbance here, 91L. You can see the track of the disturbances that came across the southern islands. Now it's sitting to the northeast of Caracas, Venezuela. And it's very close to land, so it's interacting with the landmass here a little bit. That has slowed down its potential development for the day. Also, take a close look. See this band of clouds right here, especially right in here. Watch this one more time. There it is. So that's an outflow boundary at the surface. That's exactly the opposite of what you would want to see if you had a storm that was intensifying, that was strengthening. Uh, intensifying low pressure areas bring inflow into the surface and then up through the storm. So that's a flow away from the system. Outflow boundaries like that are a sign that the system is not quite ready to close off a low and really develop. That being said, we can take a closer look at the surface winds down here and you can clearly see the wave. And then right in here, see the winds, they do back to the, from out of the, out of the west. So they're westerlies here. It's trying to close off a little low it's elongated, so the system remains at the surface relatively disorganized for now. As far as the upper level winds, wind shear, it's very, very light. There's light wind shear coming out of the north, north, northeast, blowing to the southwest. It's light shear, but in a, with a storm in its infancy, it can be enough to disrupt its uh, potential circulation. So no development as of Wednesday. It's looking more likely that Thursday, Friday, we will see at least a little bit more development. And we can, first of all, check on where this is headed. All the global spaghetti plots want to head this almost due west and then bring a landfall into Nicaragua and Honduras, and then perhaps a second one near Belize or just stay over Central America as it goes into Guatemala, uh, El Salvador. So 
uh, who should be watching this. Really pay attention to the forecast. Nicaragua, Honduras, Belize, you know, the southeast uh, Yucatan Peninsula as well. Pay very close attention to you in case it were to jog a little bit to the north. But that really takes the Gulf of Mexico and the United States out of play. Looking at the spaghetti plots here. Looking at the two models we lean on heavily, the GFS and the Euro, they've both tried to close off a broad little low there as of Thursday morning. Then we go into Friday. So Curacao, you may see a, a you might see a tropical depression here. You might still see just a, a tropical disturbance, but you're going to see gusty wind and some heavy rain showers going into Thursday, Friday. Curacao islands just to the north of Venezuela as that moves on through, but it's a, still a, just a developing system in its infancy. So you're not looking at a, a very hard hit there. Storm clearly gets better organized as we head into Saturday, but at that point it's off the coast of South America, well south of Jamaica and the Caymans and Haiti. So no impacts there as the system gets better organized over open water. That's on Saturday. And then the Euro has a landfall on Sunday of perhaps a Cat 1 hurricane on the coast of Nicaragua. The GFS is a little slower. The American model has a landfalling, potentially landfalling hurricane right there on the border of Honduras and Nicaragua. That's going into Monday. So Sunday, Monday, potential landfalls in Central America. And then the Euro loses it. The GFS wants to bring it back uh, toward Belize as we head into Tuesday and maybe a second landfall across Belize could see impacts as far north as um, Cozumel with uh, wind and rain showers. Uh, so that's what we're looking at, potentially a second landfall, and then it loses it as it goes into Wednesday. So neither model redevelops anything in the southern Gulf of Mexico. So that would take the United States out of play. Good for the U.S., Central America, pay very close attention to that. Nicaragua, Honduras, Belize in particular going into the end of the week and the weekend. Big picture, upper level wind flow, sharp trough across Canada. You see the snow, pretty good trough off the East Coast. And that's still a circulation that's bringing wind and rain to New York and Boston on this Wednesday. Uh, notice the ridge. See the clockwise flow? That's the ridge. And our system here is on the southern edge of that ridge, and that ridge, that mountain of air, is going to sit on our 91L and won't let it move to the north. So that's why it's making that westerly movement all the way into Saturday, Sunday. Here's our ridge with the system riding along the southern edge of it and just being pushed along to the west, along the southern edge of that ridge, and then going into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, making a potential landfall across Central Amer America, Nicaragua, Honduras, Belize. And you can clearly see the ridge. There it is, tucked into the southern circulation around that ridge, and then it gets a good shove and continues into Mexico. That's a significant flash flooding threat for Mexico, but it doesn't look like a big hurricane threat for Mexico. So that's going into Wednesday. That's a week out. It's very similar to the uh, solution we saw on Tuesday's update. So this is getting more confidence that this is going to be a solution that does verify. So there's something else going on as well that you may be able to see. There's also a front across the central U.S. next Wednesday, the 12th of October. So this might be our first stronger front that would impact a larger part of the United States. It's not going to be an Arctic blast but it may bring some much needed rain to the southern U.S. and East Texas on Thursday as it pushes in here. And then that would open the door to a little more of a northerly flow across the deep south, southeast U.S. That trough digs all the way down into Florida with some rain going into Saturday. This is the 15th. So the weekend of October 15th may bring some fall weather to the eastern half of the country, including the deep south and including here in Houston, where I am based. That would be nice. That's where we stand this evening. Questions, comments, hit me up on social. We'll keep you posted. Until next time, stay weather smart and stay safe.